Hey guys, Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire, and today uh, we'll we'll call this an educational video, it's an educational blog. Uh, I'm gonna give you a scenario, and uh, when you hear it, uh, I want you to keep in mind that I'm not um, promoting either one of these uh, situations as better than the other. Um, I'm just going to give you an honest assessment uh, as to how things worked uh, a long time ago in a school as compared to how things work now just so you see the difference. The scenario is you have two students. We'll call one Steve and we'll call one Johnny. Uh, Steve and Johnny are in sixth grade. They sit next to each other in class and they're constantly kind of playing around uh, calling each other names, poking each other, touching each other, just, you know, constantly, you know, playing around. Um, and let's say that Steve and Johnny um, are playing around one day and that Steve um, pokes Johnny with his pencil. And when he pokes Johnny with his pencil, uh, it breaks the skin and Johnny's arm starts to bleed and so Johnny goes up to the teacher to tell what has happened with him and Steve. Alright, there's your scenario. Uh, now, let's go back to let's say 1976, okay? Uh, 1976, that happens and um, Johnny goes up to the teacher, tells her uh, Steve has, has has jabbed me with his with, with his arm with his pants on. She's you know, were you okay? Well, my arm's bleeding. She looks. She sees his arm's bleeding, and she thinks, oh, you guys, I've told y'all about playing. You need to quit. Y'all keep doing this kind of stuff. Now somebody's got hurt. I need you to go down to the office and get the you know get the secretary to look at your arm. I, you know, I don't know if she needs to send you home or what. So she sends him to the office. Teacher turns around. She looks at uh, Steve. And she says, Steve, um, you poke Johnny in the arm with pencil, his arm's bleeding. Uh, I know, but, but, but John, no, you need to go out in the hall. And so she sends Steve out in the hall. Uh, she goes next door, gets the teacher next door, walks her over there with her, gets her paddle out of her desk, and says, Steve, I've told y'all y'all need to quit playing. Now you have hurt Johnny, and you, you poked him in the arm. His arm's bleeding, so you're getting a paddling. And then when Johnny gets back, y'all aren't going to be sitting next to each other anymore because y'all can't uh, act right. So she gives him a paddling, sends him back to class. Um, later on that afternoon, she's going to call his mom, tell her what happened and that she gave him a paddling. Uh, and then the mom says something to the effect of, well, I'll take care of him when he gets home. I'm going to find out what's going on. And um, the teacher probably was out of class, I don't know, five, ten minutes at the most. The other teacher was out of class a few minutes. The kid was out of class a few minutes. Uh, let's say Johnny goes down to the office. The secretary looks at it and goes, go in there and wash your arm off. And he washes his arm and comes back. And, and she maybe puts a little something on it to make it stop bleeding. And then she gives him a Band-Aid and puts a Band-Aid on his arm and says, are you okay? It's quit bleeding, so I think you're going to be okay. And he says, all right. And then she sends him back to class. He goes back to class. And then he finds out his seat's been moved when he gets back to class. And the secretary probably will call his mom and say, hey, uh, your son came down here today. His arm was bleeding because somebody poked him with a pencil. Um, the teacher told me that, that she, you know, had taken care of it and gave the other boy a paddle. And, and so, um, you know, if anything else goes on, let us know. But uh, his, his arm seemed to be okay. And mom says, okay, well, thank you for doing that. And that's the end of it. Okay. That's the way it may have been handled in 1976. Now, let's say exact same scenario. Sixth grade, two boys, exact same thing happens in 2019. Now, you are going to be shocked at the number of people that this involves and how involved this is. Again, I'm not saying which one was better, uh, but I'm just telling you here's the difference. Okay? Uh, so, same thing happens. Um, Johnny goes up to the teacher, says, hey, my arm's bleeding. He, he, he poked me with a pencil and she sees his arms bleeding. So the teacher goes up and she pushes the emergency button. And when she pushes the emergency button, she says, I got a student that's down here bleeding. I need the nurse to be sent down here and I need an administrator. Uh, so now an administrator and a nurse are gonna go down to that room and see what the deal is. They show up, 
uh, the nurse looks at the boy, his arm is bleeding, she takes him down to the thing. So while all that's going on, she takes him to the nurse's office. While that's going on, the teacher's filling out an incident report, and the assistant principal asks her what happened, and she says, I, don't, I mean, all I know is he came up, his arm was bleeding, he said that that, that boy over there, that Steve poked him with a pencil, and, and it was bleeding, so... You know, so the assistant principal, you know, looks at Steve and says, come here. And he takes Steve down to his office to find out what, what was going on. And then the teacher has to fill out an incident report. The teacher has to fill out an injury form report. And then because somebody poked somebody with a pencil in her class, now she's going to have to also fill out a, um, you know, some kind of statement or some kind of referral, a disciplinary referral for that student because he poked the other kid in the arm. And she's probably going to have to make some phone calls too. So uh, she's got a good 45 minutes, hour worth of work that she's got to do because this happened in her class. All right. Then the assistant principal takes the, the first boy down to the office and he starts asking, and the boy knows he's in trouble because he's going to the assistant principal's office and he has poked somebody and they were bleeding. Um, so when he gets to the assistant principal's office, the assistant principal starts asking him why, you know, what's going on, I need you to tell me why this happened. And he's like, well, he's always, uh, he was calling me names, and he, and he always does all this stuff to me, and it was an accident, I didn't even mean to do it, uh, I, I, I didn't even mean to, to do it, we were just playing around, we were always playing around, uh, but he's, he just makes me so mad. And so the, the, the prince, this assistant principal goes to the nurse's office and checks on the other boy and says, hey, wh what happened? He's, he did it. He did it on purpose. He meant to do it, and, and he's always doing stuff like that. He's always picking on me, and he's always bullying me, and he's always doing all that. And so now he said that this student is bullying him. Um, and the other kids that were in the office heard it, the nurse heard it, and everybody heard it. So he's saying this kid's bullying him, and not only did he bully him, but he poked him in the arm with a pencil, uh, which is battery. So now the assistant principal has to, by law, because there's a state law, about bullying, and uh, he has to do a bullying investigation. So the assistant principal has to go back to his office. He gets stuff out of his desk for a bullying investigation. Uh, it involves about 15 steps. Um, part of it means he has to notify the central office. He notifies the person that is the district uh, person over all the middle schools that he is doing a bullying investigation and this one student has claimed that this other student is bullying him and not only that, but he has poked him in the arm with a pencil and, you know, so here's where it stands right now. I will let you know once I do the investigation. So he goes down there. He gives the kid a form. Do you want to fill out a bullying complaint form, or do you just want to do a statement? I'll just do a statement. So he gives the kid a piece of paper. He writes down his statement about what happened and how he claims that, that um, Stephen is bullying him. And then uh, he has to name witnesses as part of the statement. So he names 15 kids as witnesses that he says has seen Stephen calling him names, doing stuff physical to him, doing all these things to him, and they, you know, it's just, you know, so now he has to interview um, 15 kids, so the assistant principal takes that statement, interviews all 15 witnesses, has to call all them out of class, meanwhile he's having to keep Stephen out of class and Johnny out of class until he can come to some kind of conclusion about what's going on. Um, he can't even call Johnny's mother or Stephen's mother to tell him what's happening because he doesn't have a result of the investigation yet. He has to do a full investigation. Uh, meanwhile, the nurse calls Johnny's mother to tell her that he's been, uh, you know, poked in the arm and, you know, and, and she's like, well, what happened? Well, ma'am, I don't know. I'm just a nurse. Well, I want to know why the nurse can't tell her what happened because the nurse doesn't do an investigation. She says the assistant principal will do an investigation and then he'll contact and let her know. Well, it's going to take to interview 15 kids at least an hour and a half. Um, so the sister principal's busy doing that. Meanwhile, the mom's getting madder and madder because nobody's contacting her about her son with his arm bleeding and wanting to know what's going on and how come nobody's, you know, taking this seriously. And so the assistant principal continues. Um, he gets almost finished, and he goes to talk with Stephen, who has been accused of bullying, and he tells him, okay, Stephen, uh, you've been accused of bullying by uh, Johnny because he, you poked him with a pencil, and he says that you've been doing stuff like this for a long time and that you've called him names and that you've done all this stuff. And Stephen says, whoa, wait a minute. He's 
he calls me names. As a matter of fact, today uh, he had called me, you know, and he goes through and he lists like five, six names, you know, and he's always cussing at me. And I didn't even, I like, it was an accident when he got poked. All he did was reach over to my desk and I had my pencil and I was just holding my pencil out like this and he got poked in the arm. It wasn't even my fault. He got poked. I mean, he's the one that's always doing stuff to me. I'm the one that's getting bullied, not him. So do you want to do a bullying complaint? Yeah, I want to do a bullying complaint. If he's going to say I'm bullying him. And so now the assistant principal has to get out another bullying complaint for him, go through all 15 steps with that kid, notify the district office that there's been a bullying complaint about the other kid. Uh, how many witnesses do you have? Ah, oh, he, he names 12 kids. Now he's got to interview 12 more kids. Um, and at the end of all this, and then he goes back to the Johnny uh, kid that got poked in the arm to start with and says, hey, Steven says you're bullying him, so now I have to uh, interview you about bullying him. That's not true. He, uh, that, and so now both of them are saying the other one's bullying them. The assistant principal finally gets all the uh, evidence, uh, and he has taken pictures of the arm. He's taken pictures of the pencil. He's done all this stuff. He's notified the district office. He goes to his principal. He tells his principal that um, the investigation is done. I have interviewed 25 students. Uh, I interviewed the teacher. I interviewed both kids that this happened to. All I can tell you at the, as a result of all this is that two kids said that Stephen took the pencil like this and was trying to stab the kid like that, with a, like, it's a, like he was trying to kill him and he stabbed him in the arm. And then two other kids said that they saw it, but all that happened is that Stephen had his pencil laying on the desk and that Johnny turned around and shoved his arm trying to hit Stephen, but the, uh, and then the pencil stuck in his arm. So those are two totally different stories. They don't match up at all. We have no earthly, I, I, don't, I mean, neither one of those are even remotely the same. And then there were some other kids that saw it, but they really weren't sure how it happened. And then most of the kids that were supposed to be the witnesses, all they said is that they argue all the time and they're all the time calling each other names and that both of them bother each other and, they, and now they've got to where it's aggravating them. They don't even pay attention to them anymore. So I don't know what they do because that's all they do is fuss and argue with each other. So I just ignore them. So that's it. That's all the evidence that you have. You can't prove whether, you know, you don't have a preponderance of evidence to say that it was intentional. You don't have a, pro a preponderance of evidence to say it was an accident. Uh, all you know is somehow or another this kid poked this other kid with a pencil. Um, so now you have a bullying investigation that is complete. You call the district office, you say, I can't say that either one of them is bullying the other. It sounds like both of them are saying, doing stuff back and forth to each other. Um, so that is the conclusion is that this is not bullying. However, this one kid was doing something inappropriate with his pencil or he wouldn't have poked the other kid with a pencil in his arm. So that's the one thing we know that happened is that he poked the other kid in the pencil in, in the arm with a pencil somehow or another. He shouldn't have been doing it that way. So that's the only conclusion you can come to. The principal agrees with it. The district person agrees with it. Uh, and so now they have to notify the parents. And so you, he notifies the parents. Well, my son got stabbed in the arm, so what did you do about it? Uh, well, ma'am, I can't really tell you what I did. I am going to do a disciplinary consequence with the other student. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, he stabbed my son. Well, uh, he claims that, that, that uh, your, your son... Uh, claim that the other kid was bullying him. What? Bullying? And so then it becomes a whole other thing and the parent gets all upset and you know, there's kids that kill themselves every day over bullying. We need to make sure, and I knew, that, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was going on in that class because he comes home every day and he talks about that kid. And, uh, and I said, well, yeah, but the other student filed a bullying complaint against your son. My son? My son never, you know, did, did he say, no, he says he doesn't do anything. Well, then the other kid, it's obvious that he's the one because he stabbed him in it. Well, ma'am, I, I wouldn't say he stabbed him in the arm. Well, what are you guys doing about it? Uh, don't you have a policeman down there? Don't you? Yes, ma'am, we have a resource officer. Uh, well, the resource officer, okay, um, the resource officer saw the evidence that I have just told you, and the resource officer says that he can't really say whether it was intentional or not, uh, and so he's not going to charge him because he doesn't really know whether or not the kid meant to stab him and in, in, in that. Well, is that just the end of it or can I, you know, well, no, ma'am, you can uh, press charges against that student if you'd like to because they stabbed him, you know, you're saying that he stabbed him on purpose and then the resource officer will take a, you know. So, um, well, I may just do that because it sounds to me like y'all aren't going to do anything, you know, so the mother goes on. So this is a 45-minute phone call. Um, and, you know, they end up, they're not satisfied, they're not happy. And so then they have to call the other parent 
uh, and tell them, well, your son today poked another student with a pencil. I'm not really 100% sure whether he meant to do it or not. Uh, but we do know that another student got hurt, you know, so we have assigned him, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, we gave him in-school suspension or something because, of the, you know, what he did with the pencil. Well, are you saying he did it? No, we're not saying he did it on purpose. Felt like he did it on purpose, and the resource officer probably would be involved. Um, in the meantime, the resource officer is looking at all this stuff, trying to decide what he's supposed to do. Um, he does have an injury that he can point to where one student, but he cannot say that it was intent. Um, and keep in mind, the whole time these kids are 11 years old, and so, um, you know, if the mother wants to have this other student charged, he can be charged, and then a judge can decide whether or not uh, the kid meant to do it. Uh, and the judge will use the evidence that came from the school because the school administrator is the one that interviewed all of the students, all of the witnesses, took all of them out of class and did all that, uh, along with, you know, what was given to the resource officer and the evidence that he has. Um, so that conversation doesn't go well because that parent doesn't think that their son should be because he's claiming the other kids bullying him and what's being done to the other student. Both of them want to know what's being done to the other student and the administrator can't tell either parent what's being done to the other student because uh, they have privacy laws and I can't tell you anything that I'm doing to the other student. So neither parent is happy. Um, the result of the investigation is that they don't really know whether he did it on purpose. We don't know which kid's telling the truth. Uh, we took 20 kids out of class uh, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes apiece. Uh, the teacher spent an hour, you know, doing whatever kind of paperwork they had to do. Uh, the assistant principal spent probably right at five, six hours uh, doing the investigation. Uh, compiling the evidence, presenting it to the principal, presenting it to the district person. Uh, then they had to do a, um, a conclusion to the whole thing and do a report for what it was uh, because all this information is data that goes to the federal government. Um, and the principal probably spent 35, 45 minutes, probably is going to have to also call the parents because the parents are probably going to complain to the central office because you know they think nothing was done um, so at the end of all this uh, they end up spending 30 45 minutes too the uh, school resource officer uh, ends up spending 30 minutes to an hour looking at the evidence listening to the assistant principal making phone calls to the parents uh, and may have to do more depending on if he has to go to court or not so that is today that is very typical of what would happen in the exact same situation that I described in a few minutes in 1976. Now, which one is better? I don't know. Both parents have valid concerns because they know that bullying is a big thing now, so they're, they don't want their son to be a victim of bullying, that kind of thing. Um, it's very difficult for students to give statements that make a lot of sense, no matter how you question them, uh, because, you know, especially middle school and elementary school students, and that's all that the administrator has to go by. You can't take one student's word over another student's word. Um, there are just all kind of legal things, all kind of liability involved, all kind of things that have to be done to protect, um, you know, the administrator's job, the resource officer's job, uh, the district's job. I mean, uh, there's all kind of things involved in it. And the kids are all taken out of class to be interviewed. And like I said, that's 20, 30 minutes a pop for each kid. Um, it's unbelievable the difference in the amount of time that has to be spent um, in the exact same scenario. So, you know, you may look back at it and say, well, it was better then because they didn't waste a lot of time and the teacher, you know, all the other kids didn't lose out on the teacher. I don't know, it may not have been better because, you know, it was one of those kids getting bullied. You don't know. I mean, I don't know. Um, but that's the difference. The difference is the time that's spent. So just throwing that out for your consideration just so you kind of know how things work. Have a good day on Nichols Retirement Empire.